Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great. It's time for week nine of weekly Q&A where we get your Samsung questions answered. Timestamps will be down in the description. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Our first question comes into us from Beatty. Hey, I would like a comparison between the Tab S8 Ultra and the Book 3 Pro 360 like you did last year, I think. What I ask myself is that many YouTubers, I think you too, says that the Pro 360 is good for creative tasks like Photoshop, photo editing, stuff like that. But can the Tab S8 Ultra do the same stuff or is there a high difference because of Android versus Windows so there's not the same apps on the Tab S8 Ultra which normally most of the people would use on Windows like Photoshop? But I think a general comparison would also be great, thanks. So this is a really great question and you touched on the secret sauce here and that is Android versus Windows. So let's talk about this real quick. So as far as using the S Pen and getting the most out of it when doing your photo editing or anything like that, the better experience is a Tab S8 Ultra all day long. It's just a more refined S Pen experience. And we've touched on this on several videos, but having that low 2.8 milliseconds latency and just the Bluetooth functionality that it has, it's really a nice polished experience. However, and here's where the problem lies, you're not gonna get the app support that you want for what you're looking for. You know, if you're looking to use Photoshop, you're only going to be able to use Photoshop Express on the Tab S8 Ultra, whereas you're going to have the full version of Photoshop on the Book 3 Pro 360. And that is the biggest caveat when choosing between these two devices. And given your use case, if you're wanting to actually do photo editing, if that's really what you're using these machines for, you're going to have to go with the Book 3 Pro 360 because you're just going to have lightweight apps here on Android compared to the full-fledged versions here. But I'm going to wrap up this question with this though. If you're open to other options, I would actually consider the iPad Pro 12.9 with the Apple Pencil Gen 2. Uh, the reason being is because the iPad Pro has full support for Photoshop, so you're not going to lose the creative abilities that you're going to have here on the Book 3 Pro 360, and you'll also get the portability that you're going to get out of the Tab S8 Ultra. I know that sounds crazy to hear, and believe me, I'm not a big fan of the Apple Pencil Gen 2. I'll take the S Pen experience over it any day. I just don't like the plastic clankety-clank on top of the screen. But given your use case and given that you're wanting to do photo editing, I would probably go with the iPad Pro. Thanks for the question. All right, our next question comes in from Gerald. Hi, Raider. Thanks for answering my question. Right now, I'm trying to sync my Samsung Notes with Microsoft OneNote. I enabled the option to sync my S Notes with Microsoft OneNote in the settings, yet I couldn't seem to find my S Notes in OneNote. Is there a way to fix this? Thanks. Um, yes, my friend. Let me go ahead and walk you through this real quick. All right, so first things first, whatever device you're using S Notes on, let's go into settings real quick and confirm your settings that you have. So we have settings right up here, and we have sync with Microsoft OneNote. So you want to be logged in with that account, right? And you also want to pick your folders to sync. So make sure you have all these selected, whatever folders you have on your device. And that's about it as far as Samsung Notes go. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what you need to do with OneNote. All right, so we got Microsoft OneNote for desktop open on the Book 3 Pro 360. And I'm sorry if the camera view looks a little weird. The white is kind of blowing everything out. Um, you do have to use the desktop version of OneNote, not the web version. And then what you're going to do is up here you have the little feed icon. You want to go ahead and tap on that click on it, whatever it may be, and you want to go ahead and sign in to your Microsoft account. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And then once you're signed in, you should be able to scroll down and you'll see here, I've got my uh, Samsung notes showing up on the right hand side. And you just select one of these notes and you drop it in. One caveat though, my friend, is that when you drag and drop your S notes in, they're just going to drag in as images. You're not really going to be able to edit the notes, but it is kind of nice if you want to slap them into a OneNote. If you've taken some notes in S notes and you want to embed them, so you do have that option. But uh, yeah, this is how you do it. You want to use OneNote for desktop and just open up your feed. You should be all set. All right, our next question comes to us from Sarab. Great video. Can you guide me on how to increase the SSD capacity on the Book 3 Pro 360? I need to increase the capacity. Was wondering if there is an extra slot or not and what form factor of SSD would go into that. All right, great question, my friend. So yes, indeed, you do have an empty slot. So let's go here. I'll walk you through it real quick. So yeah, first things first is you're going to need a toolkit from a company like iFixit, right? You'll get all your pry tools and stuff included. You want to pry off the rubber feet here, and then there's going to be screws underneath of them. You want to take each screw out. There's going to be four total. And then you're going to take your pry tool and run gently along the edges, just kind of getting this kind of loose all the way around. And then this back cover will completely pop off. Now in the back of here, you're going to notice one SSD right in this section already, already preoccupied. It's a 2280 size. 
And also on the Book 3 Pro 360, we have an additional slot right over here. I'm not gonna take my back off, sorry my friend. I, I have terrible eyesight, so I don't try to mess with stuff like this unless I have to. But uh, I have seen plenty of pictures of it. You're gonna see a spare slot right here. It's a 2280 size slot this year. Last year it was down to a 2230, and then the first Galaxy Book Pro was a 2280. So they went 2280, 2230, and then back to 2280. Um, you can fit whatever size you want. I've seen plenty of people on Reddit saying they've added two terabytes, like the Samsung drives. So yeah, you have plenty of options, and you can also replace the main SSD if you wanna go ahead and do a fresh clean install of Windows. You have that option too. Thanks for the question. All right, our next question comes to us from Jose. My Galaxy Book Flex has an outdoor mode in the function keys. Is there something like that on the Galaxy Book 3 Pro? No, my friend, there is not. You actually have the only model that has that feature. So what Jose is talking about is on the Galaxy Book Flex, you have the ability to hit a function toggle and it'll boost up the brightness. But that uses a different type of panel than these Galaxy Books here. Like this uses an OLED panel, whereas that one doesn't. That's what, a TFT or something? So you don't have the same type of panel. Um, and Samsung is probably not including that anymore to help protect the panel because you really don't want to push OLED that hard. But no, it is not an option on any of the newer Galaxy Books at all. Pro, Pro 360, the Book 3 Ultra, it's not there. Thanks for the question. All right, our next question comes in from Sankhard. I found out about your channel while I was trying to find some information on how to connect the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro to a PC. I watched your other video in which you have showed that there is Galaxy Buds app. Anyways, this is the second video of yours that I'm watching and so far I'm liking your content. So I just subscribed to your channel. I hope it helps. Sankford, it really does help. I really do appreciate it. You know, one thing about my channel is I never ask people to like or subscribe. I just feel very uncomfortable doing that. So when you guys take the initiative to do that, it really helps me out a lot. And it just feels great, you know, to go into my analytics and see new supporters. So I really do appreciate it. It does help. Thank you. And then to continue on, you write, by the way, I don't know if you have a content on this or if someone has asked you a similar question or not, but I actually bought a Galaxy Tab S7 sometime after it came out because I thought I would use it. However, I have only used it like five times, so it just stays inside my drawer. Yeah, it happens with a lot of people that buy tablets. What I want to ask is what would be a good use case for it? Normally I would sell it, but it was a gift from my aunt so I cannot sell it. So there's quite a few uses I can think of for your Tab S7. So you can use it as a second screen for like your laptop or desktop or something like that. You could also use it for like your security cameras in your home as a monitor for that. You can use it as a smart hub interface, right? For all your smart things and other smart home appliances. Um, I personally use my tablet as a monitor for my camera right above us. I'm using the Fold 4 now just because I'm using the Tab S8 Ultra a lot in this video, but typically I use my tablet for that. So yeah, there's a lot of little one-off cases. Um, Note-taking, because uh, the S Pen experience on any of these Galaxy tablets is fantastic. So if you can get in the habit of using it for that, it's great for that as well. And uh, one of the greatest use cases for tablets is media consumption while you're sitting on the couch. You know, and don't forget, you also have call and text on other devices. So if you wanna just set your phone to the side for a while, enjoy some movies, but still not miss a phone call or text, you have that option on your Tab S7 as well. So hopefully some of these ideas will help get your creative juices flowing and hopefully you get some use out of that Tab S7. That's a great tablet. Thanks for the question. All right, our last question for this week comes in from Thomas. Thomas writes, how do I take a screenshot with the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360? Well, I got the Book 3 Pro 360 here and it's the same on all the Galaxy Books. You have quite a few options. So you can press the print screen key right there and that will take a screenshot in the background and then you can open up Microsoft Paint and just copy paste it there. You can also press Windows plus print screen and that will save an image to your screenshots folder in your pictures main folder and that'll get saved as a .png file. You can also open up the Samsung screen recorder. I'll do that real quick. Give it a second to load up here. And then right here, you'll see this option right here, screenshot. Go ahead and tap it one time. It'll take a screenshot and it's gonna save it to whatever folder you have configured here in your settings. Here's your file settings right here. So uh, you also have the Windows snipping tool. Don't forget about that. You can press Windows Shift S to get to that quickly. So you have like four or five different ways to quickly take a screenshot on these machines. All right, so that wraps up this week's questions. Next week, we're starting off with Adobe Premiere Pro on the Book 3 Pro 360. Can this machine handle it? That's gonna be a tough one, should be fun. All right, if you have any questions for an upcoming Q&A video, please drop them down in the comments section below. I really do appreciate your time, and as always, thanks for watching.